David Britton, um, Director of Adams Auctioneers in Dublin. Um, Adams are delighted to be coming to Northern Ireland. Um, the opening exhibition um, we have put on is drawn from private collections both north and south of the border. Um, there are a lot of museum quality pieces. Um, surprisingly, um, what a lot of people find surprising is that nothing's for sale. Um, and it's just more a showcase um, of a work in the exhibition is called The French Connection. The late 19th century, early 20th century Irish painters who went and studied in France and showing their influences um, from both their studies in France and particularly going to the artist colonies in Brittany, um, particularly probably Pontevin and Concarneau. Um, probably among the highlights of the show um, would include, as I said, the likes of Stanhope Forbes, um, Roderick O'Connor, Walter Osborne, Nathaniel Holm. But we're very excited that we have sort of probably showing for the first time ever in Ireland um, a new discovery of an artist called Thomas Hovenden. Now, Thomas Hovenden was born in Cork um, around 1840 and he went and studied. Um, originally, his parents unfortunately died in the famine and he ended up in an orphanage. But he went to the Cork School of Arts before he went and studied over in uh, France. He became very well known in the States um, for painting the African Americans, and they adopted him as an American artist. Um, the examples that we would have here um, would be from his time in Brittany. Um, but um, Thomas Hovenden, unfortunately, life was cut very short because um, there was a girl walking in front of a tram, and he went to rescue her. And unfortunately, um, he lost his life um, in, in the process of the rescuing. The tragedy actually made the New York Times at the time. As far as we're aware, the, only, the two pieces that we have here um, are the only pieces in Irish collections, and they're both drawn from private collections. Um, and to the best of our knowledge, there's none in any public collection um, in Ireland. So that's quite an exciting sort of element to try and reintroduce somebody that people aren't as familiar with. Um, like probably the name that would be most associated and probably our only true Irish impressionist would be Roderick O'Connor. And we have three examples in the exhibition um, from three different periods. Probably the most important would be the Breton um, girl with the very, very strong stripes. And that dates from around the late 1880s. Um, around the same time, and who would have exhibited with them, um, Catherine McCausland, again, another very rare artist that one doesn't come across at all. Um, and we have quite a delightful sort of museum quality work um, here serving dinner. Um, by Catherine McCausland. Um, she ended up living in, um, in France and was known locally as Mrs. Mack, and her pictures are included in some of the collections in Brittany um, still. Probably before the 1870s, the Irish artists didn't tend to go to France. It was always London. And so originally, it started probably in the late 1870s, beginning of the 1880s, the Irish artists started going to France the locals really all became models and they were very willing subjects. One of the latest works that we have would be by William Scott. And that William Scott and his wife Mary um, wouldn't necessarily be associated with France and French painting, but they actually set up a school of painting in Pontevin in 18, or 1937. And we actually have um, an, a wor work from the Breton period, a study of a, an old Breton woman What's interesting about that, because William Scott was fascinated that he was following in the footsteps of Gauguin, and this lady actually modelled as a young girl for Gauguin. The exhibition does cover not just the sort of the 19th century, it does enter into the 20th century. Among the other sort of more unusual artists um, that we would have is a local artist called Georgina Moutry Kyle. Um, she um, was born in Craig Navarre. The, we have a lovely sort of Breton scene by her. Um, the Ulster Museum in her own lifetime bought a Concarneau market scene um, by her and there's quite a collection of her work up in the Belfast Castle. Um, the other sort of more unusual artists, again, that one normally doesn't see would be the likes of uh, Maria Dorothy Webb. Again, a very rare artist. Um, she studied, again, around the same sort of period as the others around the mid-1880s. Um, and we have this wonderful, delightful um, view of a young girl under, under an apple blossom tree. And it's 
just so evocative um, of that sort of sentimentality that you would have in sort of the late Victorian times.